we're going to be taking a look at the sphenoid bone. So for this, I'm going to actually be removing the mandible. I'm going to take that and set this off to the side. And we're going to be starting by looking at this full outer surface here known as the temporal fossa. So I'm going to name the four bones of the temporal fossa. If you've been watching the previous ones, you'll already be able to answer this. But this first one here is the frontal bone. We have the parietal bone. We have the temporal bone, mainly named for the temporal fossa. But down in behind the zygomatic bone here in the orbit, this, where I'm lay laying my finger along, is known as the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. So it is a part of the bone that is kind of external. If you point behind your eye, you won't be able to make contact with it directly because the muscle temporalis is covering it, but this is a part of your sphenoid, the greater wing. Next, I'm gonna be taking that cap away and we're gonna to return to inside the orbit here. So the very back of the orbit is sphenoid bone. Again, not going to be able to make contact with any of that, obviously because of your eyes in there. But we can see in a pretty round circle in the back here and place my pen inside. This is known as the optic foramen or optic canal. A little bit larger and lateral to that. This is the superior orbital fissure. And then it's not going to be as easy to identify. But down here, I'm running my, finger, my pen along the infraorbital fissure. So in the back of your orbit is some sphenoid bone. I'm going to turn back to the side here. And as we turn the bone over and start to look at a inferior view. I'm going to be landmarking some of the other bones that are in close proximity to the sphenoid as well as a few landmarks here. So first of all I'm going to start right in the center here. This is your vomer which is in between your left and right nostril so it's helping separate. Uh, above or I guess more anterior than that these are palatine bones. So in behind the palatine process of maxilla, left and right palatine bone meeting vomer, and this landmark right here is known as your posterior nasal spine. Well, the vomer makes contact with the sphenoid bone on either side, so I'm going along now what is known as a pterygoid plate. I'm going to try to do a little pincher grasp of that. This, what I'm currently trying to pinch, is the medial pterygoid plate, and at the most kind of distal part of that there's a little bit of a bump or spike sticking off of it. This is known as your hamulus right here. So that is a part of that medial pterygoid plate. Lateral to the pterygoid plate, as you might have guessed, this is your lateral pterygoid plate. A little bit easier for me to show, so I'll be able to pinch that and run my finger all the way along it. And this becomes a little bit more important for the fact that it is the origin of both your medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. So they take advantage of either side of the lateral pterygoid plate. So this would be the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid, and this would be the lateral surface of that pterygoid plate. And again, this right in here is that greater wing of the sphenoid bone going up and lateral. Okay, I'm going to point out a few foramen in this area. So we have our occipital bone meeting sphenoid bone, and we have a fairly easy to identify foramen. This is known as foramen lacerum, right in this location here. And if I went just off of that lateral pterygoid plate, we have another fairly large foramen. This is foramen oval and more posterior and not actually a full opening on this skull, um, this is the foramen spinosum right in this area. So again, three large foramen all in and around that sphenoid bone. Okay, we're gonna change our view and we're gonna finish inside of the skull. And obviously the cap has been removed and we're gonna be pointing out a few bony landmarks in this area as well. Okay, so I'm going to start with my pen and kind of go along. This part of the bone right here is known as the lesser wing of the sphenoid. This is the lesser wing. And off of the bottom of it, this is known as the clinoid process. Right in this area here, so just that bottom location. We have what almost looks like an eye, and that would be helpful because this is your optic foramen. So from the inside of the orbit, it's coming in towards the head in this location here. We have this 
kind of, I'm going to try to outline it with a pen. It's a little bit hard to see exactly where this line is, but this is known as the jugum. And the jugum is basically just posterior to what is the ethmoid bone. So while I'm here, I'm going to point out the ethmoid bone. We have the crista gale, this top part here. And then if you see all these little tiny holes on either side of it, they're perforated and that is known as your cribiform plate. So the ethmoid bone just sits anterior to the jugum of the sphenoid bone. If we went from foramen or canal back and forth, this is known as your prechiasmatic groove. And posterior to the prechiasmatic groove is a location known as the cella tersica. So towards the front, we have a tuberculum cellae. And behind that, we have a dorsum cellae. And in the middle of this, this is known as your hypophyseal fossa, which is also where your pituitary gland sits. That's going to be right inside this space here. If you exit out of that cella tersica, you will take a ride down the clivus, which basically extends all the way from sphenoid bone, covering into the basilar part of the occipital bone here. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on the side. Again, all of this, this is now your greater wing of the sphenoid. So you can see that from the outside, but we can also easily see that from the inside. And again, taking a look at a couple of those foramen again from the inside, we have the foramen lacerum right in here and the foramen oval right there. So that's gonna conclude our look of the sphenoid bone.